and welcome to the FIFA World Cup qualifications. I'm here with Pro Tipster Daniel and we're going to have a quick run through of some of the matches happening over the next few days. Well, the first legs anyway. Daniel, how's it going? Uh, not too bad, not too bad. Well, well, maybe you, you want to start, maybe not with a qualification, you want to start with England. A friendly. How do we have to? <laughs> England against Germany. Um, England without Deli Alley, uh, without Harry Kane, without um, Harry Winks. Apparently Spurs players are not allowed to play against <laughs> Germany. Um, and Gareth Southgate, our wonderful England manager, is called Jake Livermore. Nice. So, um, yeah, lump on Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. Uh, Germany are probably doing the same, though. I can't imagine they're going with full squad. But they don't need to. Um, Germany's first... and um, The Confederations Cup last year, Germany played a B team, and they were amazing. And this is the difference between England and Germany. Germany have got... 20, 30 really good players, England just don't. Mm. And Germany has a good manager, and England doesn't. I really don't rate Gareth Southgate. And while I was pleased that he bought Ruben Loftus cheek and he bought Tammy Abraham into the squad, you look at some of the players we've got, and they're just not in terms of quality. And it's a friendly, so no one's going to care. Um, to be honest with you, I, I'm always a little bit reluctant when it comes to friendlies. I'd like to look at the, the lineups before I place any bets. Because motivation is a real factor, but um, yeah, I'd be looking. I'd, I'd be all over Germany for this. What are they? They're two point three seven to win. Germany are. Yeah. I'll be down with bookies this afternoon. Then. <laughs> England are two point nine one. The draw is three point two eight. Both teams to score one point seven seven, which I think is pretty low. No, but I, I think with friendlies, this is very likely to happen. I would go with both teams to score. Yeah. yeah. Both teams scoring, and then Germany win then. So let's, there's two matches happening on Thursday then. Croatia and Greece and Northern Ireland are playing Switzerland. I want to start with Croatia and Greece. Uh, let me give you some stats, Daniel, to see if I can impress you. Germany won one loss in seven at home. That was to Belgium. They finished behind Belgium, obviously, in second place. But Greece, though, Greece are unbeaten away all campaign. They've scored nine and five and only conceded three, while uh, uh, Croatia have scored eight and seven. Uh, sorry, uh, qualification six and six. Only only a goal per game for Croatia. Yeah. I think, and the, the prices I think are a bit, a bit off here. Croatia one point three five to win, Greece are eleven point four five to win, and the draw is four point four. I think really? Croatia are underpriced. I think. I think so too. I think it's going to be a really cagey game because uh, Croatia aren't going to want to lose this and go back and go back to uh, Athens trying to chase a result. I think Greece. Um, the, they're not the power, uh, They're not the great team of two thousand and four. Put it that way. <laughs> great. <laughs> well, you know, you know the team that actually won the European Championship, yeah. but um, they've improved, and I would. Be, it, it's it's one of those. It's also um, one of those regional sort of things as well. Cause, you know, Croatia and Greece, both in the Balkans, both got history. Mm. Um, I I would expect a really really cagey nervous game I think it was going to be under two and a half goals mm. for sure um, I would have thought Croatia would win but at those odds of Greece I'd be looking at maybe what the handicap market has handicap, and the handicap the handicap the, is Croatia minus uh, 1.25 and that was I think it was 1.8 1 1.7 isn't it yeah. those. I, so, so you're looking so 1.25 is the line uh, Greece plus 1.25 I'd probably look at one and a half, maybe. Mm. I'd be looking at that because Greece plus one and a half means that they've, they've, they've got to lose by more than two. Yeah. Two, yeah, and I don't think they will. So, yeah, Greece, one, yeah, Greece plus one point five. I'd go for it. Uh, the both teams to score was a three point zero, and I yeah. think that's definitely worth a look. No, I don't. I think it's no? going to be one 0 I think it's going to be a very, very, very cagey game. I don't think it's going to be goals. Okay. Oh well, I was just going on that that the Greece have scored a lot. Away, you know, so it, one. You know. Yeah, it's it's a one-off game though. It's well, it's almost a one-off game. You know, you you've got two teams who, this is their last chance, their last last chance to uh, secure uh, qualification for the finals, and for Croatia, they know that if they don't get a result, they've got it all to do next leg. Likewise, Greece know if they lose heavily, mm. they're gonna, they you know, they're gonna really struggle in in Athens. Yeah. So Greece are going to do everything they can to frustrate Croatia. Yeah. I suppose it's just a thing across all the games. Every away team is they desperately want at least one away goal. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same for everyone. So next then, Windsor Park, Windsor Park Northern Ireland are, are taking on Switzerland. So Michael O'Neill's uh, team, they're 
really difficult to beat. They only lost to Germany. They finished second behind, second behind Germany. They finished ahead of Czech Republic. And okay, Norway are not as good as what they used to be, but they Norway did come on a lot during the qualification. Daniel, let me give you some more stats then. So they only lost to Germany. They scored 13 goals in five, which is amazing for Northern Ireland. So 2.6 per game, conceded three, and all of those were to Germany. You know, Switzerland, on the other hand, they only lost to Portugal. That was on the last day of qualification. They yeah. screwed, it, screwed it up. Uh, but they've, they've scored 10 in five and conceded five. Um, both teams uh, in their qualification uh, games have been uh, over 2.5, three out of five times. Um, do you know, I've got to go with the Ulster men here. I think they're going to do it at home. Yeah, I do too. Um, like Switzerland took 27 points out of 13 qualification and sent them 18. And then you look at their qualifying group, which is like Moldova, <laughs> yeah, 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 Faroe yeah, yeah. Islands. Exactly. And it's like, no, it's not amazing at all. Mm. Um, and as you said, they, they, they screwed up last day. They, they could have gone through automatically and done Portugal into this. Um, Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland are the classic team that's bigger than the uh, sum of its parts. No stars in the team, but they all play and work together so hard. And I look at this Swiss team, and you know, you've got Jordan Shakiri, who I don't think is really doing it for Stoke. Granit Xhaka, I think the most overrated midfielder in the Premier League. Um, I don't know how he's worth 35 million. Um, yeah, okay, Dav uh, David Alaba, uh, Bayern Munich, great player, but I really, uh, I, I, would, I would be back in Northern Ireland for this. Yeah, yeah I would too, definitely, yeah. I think if it was away from home, I think it would be a different story, but at home, Windsor Park, it's it's intimidating up there, you know, at the best of times. So I, I think they'll do it. Uh, the odds on them to win are three point five two. Switzerland are our favourites at two point two six. Overs two point eight one. Both teams to score is something as well. I'd have a look at. They're both scoring not the goals home and away. Two point three five. A couple of you know decent shouts there. I, I think if, if Northern Ireland are three something to win, uh, I'd be looking in the handicap markets. Maybe what. They are plus 0 0.5. Yeah, 0.25 is the line. Yeah, so yeah, 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 that would that'd be right, about mm -hmm. right then. So I will be looking for another 9 plus 0 0.5, which would be about 1 1.6, 1 1.7, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which is win or draw at home. Yeah. And I think that is a real, you know, I, I can't see any other result but that. So I think that will be a great bet. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go to the Ulster man. Who's next then? Uh, Sweden are, are at home to Italy. This is. Uh, you know, poor Italy. I have, I have a soft spot for Italy. They'll, they'll be my second team in international football. Uh, but they were up against Spain in qualification and they got hammered 3 0 uh, in Spain. And that's what worked against them in their qualification. Sweden, though, uh, Sweden are unbeaten at home in the campaign. They've scored 18 goals, which is amazing, 3.6 per game. But the thing is, eight of those goals came against Luxembourg. So I can't really count them. They've only conceded two, though, in, in, all, their, in all their games. Italy, as I said, only lost was Trina to Spain. Um, they've scored 11 and conceded 6. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a classic Catanaccio here, I think, Italy. Yeah, I, I actually don't, right? I, I think Italy are not a great team away from home. Um, yes, they only lost to Spain in qualifying. They only just squeaked past Macedonia 3 2. True, yeah. And at home, they only drew 1 1 with Macedonia as well. You look at this Italian team. It's you know yeah, it's great players. You know Buffon, uh, Basaglia, mm -hmm. but they're all getting old. There's a lot of experience, but they're all getting really old. I like to look at Chiro Mobile though. He's banging in goals this season. Mm. You know, but the the Swedish team. You know, the Swedish team without Zlatan, they they're coping without him yeah, quite nicely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you know, people say, oh yeah, you know, they stuck eight past Luxembourg. Look at Francis who's all against Luxembourg. Mm. They didn't stick eight past them. <laughs> Luxembourg are not the mugs they once were. So. Actually, for them to stick eight past Luxembourg, it's, it's more of an achievement than, than you think. Um, and I'm probably going to go against the form books here, but I'm going to go for Sweden. You'd go for Sweden. Sweden are at uh, 3.37. So again, Sweden plus 0 0.5 will probably be the safe bet. Mm -hmm. And again, it's probably going to be about 1.6, 1.7, I would have thought. Yeah, I, I think just going on the scoring form, I'd go with both teams to score, because especially it's, it's 2.15. It's over evens, like. Both yeah. teams to score. I, 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 I think you'd be mad not to be tempted by it at least anyway, or to do your own research into it and, and see what you think. We'll move on to the last one then. So my boys, Ireland are taking on Denmark. So um, you know, when I was looking up, when I was researching the away results and all, could you forget what 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 all the results are when you're so into it? And um, 
Ireland's away form is really good. Um, they finished behind Serbia, ahead of Wales. Okay, Wales were without Gareth Bale and poor, um, what's his name? Spanish Javi. Uh, he got concussed during the match and he had to go Joe off. Allen. Joe Allen, of course, yeah, his name slipped me. And so, you know, Ireland beat Wales and qualified, but they're unbeaten away from home. They had four wins, one draw, scored eight and conceded four. Um, that's really good. Martin O'Neill has made them a really hard team to play away from home. It's their form in Dublin that has let them down consistently under O'Neill. The one thing that worries me about the Republic of Ireland is, is who's going to score goals. Mm. If you look at you look at the squad they've picked, they've picked Shane Long. Yeah, they always pick him. Yeah. And I, I don't know why. Mm. When was the last time Shane Long scored? I don't, I don't know. I think it might have been against Germany that night. That's when was the last time he scored domestically? Oh. Was it February or something? Yeah, and you know, is there not better players that Ireland can pick up from? Well, there, was, there is Sean McGuire for, for Preston Norden, but he just injured himself, and now he's going to be out for three to four months. That's a big blow. Yeah. That's a really big blow. Um, and Denmark as well. I mean, uh, Christian Eriksen's playing in great form mm. for um, uh, for Spurs. Bentner, um, Nicholas, Lord Nicholas Bentner. <laughs> um, he's actually doing really well. He's found his niche again. Yeah, he's, he's doing really well in Norway for Rosenberg. Rosenberg, that's right, yeah. And, you know, as well, I mean, they've a good goalie. They've Kasper Schmeichel in goal, you know? So, yeah, I, I, you're not going to like me for saying this, but I would be looking at Denmark. Look, I, I think Ireland are going to go there. And if they, get a, if they lose 2-1, I think they'd be happy enough with that. Mm. You know, I, I think the most important thing for O'Neill would be to try and get... A uh, goal and his way of usually playing is to try and get an early goal and defend it. The problem is, is that they're not solid enough or good enough to play this Catanaccio thing of defending a lead. They just uh, they sit back and and uh, and they continually wait for the other team instead of trying to nick a second goal on the counter. They just don't don't do this at all, which is a pity because they have pace. They've Robbie Brady and James McLean. They could have a counter attacking style and Wes Hulin as well, but. It's just not the way he plays. He's a strange Jan, manager. Jan Klein's not getting much football domestically. No, either. no. But he's been Ireland's, he's Ireland's player of the year. Yeah, it's, uh, of course it's James McLean's season right now. <laughs> um, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's poppy season in the UK and uh, James McLean refuses to wear one. Yep. And it always causes controversy. Always. Um, yeah, I like him. I do like him actually. I, 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 I like him for his yeah. poppy stance as well. Yeah. Controversial. He bleeds green. Yeah, yeah, he oh. does. He does. Um, but I, I'd be looking. Um, I'd be looking at Denmark, but not to win by many. And yeah. if there's both teams to score, bet that's good. Uh, both teams to score was two point two five. So yeah, if if you think Ireland can sneak a goal early and mm-hmm. try and defend it, there's your bet. Yeah, well, I think like Ireland's. I don't know Ireland's first goal scorer bet maybe Shane Duffy or something from a corner. You know he's been doing well. He's, uh, well, you look at you look at Ireland's back line. The back line's not bad. Yeah, no, no, it's okay, yeah. You know, no, Ward is playing well at Burnley, uh, Shane Duffy, uh, Kieran Clark. You know, it, it is decent. Like, they have very, they have decent players, but there's, there's something missing in the team. A goal um, scorer. Goal scorer, yeah, that's it, you know. <laughs> but I, I, England can talk, because without Harry Kane, I, I can't see where Al's going to come mm-hmm. from. You know, without Harry Kane and Deli Alli, I definitely can't see where they're going to come from, because I... I'm not buying into the, thing, uh, to the Daniel Sturridge hype. Jamie Vardy, I think, has now become a busted flush. Um, Tammy Abraham's an interesting choice, but... Yeah. Um, I, and, and, and Sadgate doesn't play football. That's the, it's, it's the thing is that, you know, with Ireland, you know, at least if you're going to go for it, you can, if you go to try and create chances, you might, you might get one. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. all it takes is a, is a little bit of luck. But yeah. you gotta, you gotta, um, you gotta buy tickets to win the lottery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's the key. That's yeah. the key. So you know, if, if Martin O'Neill does set up the team to go for an early goal, mm. all, I'm all for it. And you know, I think you know, the Danish team's not brilliant. I can see him doing it. Mm. The trouble is, the Danish team have got a lot of quality in midfield and up front. Mm. So it's gonna be very hard to keep them out. So it's kind of, you know, we're kind of going for Asian handicaps and both teams to score in those most matches. Well, <laughs> Asian handicaps are good because uh, international football is normally between teams that are very disparate in the uh, their, their standards. And Asian handicaps try and, you know, they kind of like level that out. Mm. And the thing with like, 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 at the moment, these teams are all quite close. So the Asian handicap line is, is actually quite low. 
But um, like just half a goal. Like if you, if you back, if you got a home team, that's plus half a goal and it's above one point six. It's a really good bet because what you're betting on is a home team not to lose. And in most cases, you know, the, the it's just only a small majority. But the small majority is a home advantage. Mm -hmm. So you've got an edge there. It's worth it. It's always worth taking a look. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, you know, check lineups. Obviously, see if like, there's any late injuries that haven't been declared. Because, you know, um, they do make a difference. Like, Harry Kane does for England, you know. Like, if Immobile was out for Italy, yeah. that would be a hell of a difference. If um, Shane Duffy was out for Ireland, mm. that would be a difference. Like, Maguire being out is... So, you know, um, these games are going to be... And, and the second legs especially are going to be really edgy. And it might be worth just not... Just holding off, uh, placing a bet until closer to the time when you know what the lineups are. You know what kind of formation they're gonna play and you can understand the um the mindset of the managers yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. well look I, I can't wait I'm really looking forward to it come on you boys in green come on the Ulster men as well I hope we'll be uh <laughs> painting Russia green next year but uh Daniel thanks for joining me subscribe to our YouTube channel and get daily videos previews and podcasts as well make sure and check out protipster.com where you can earn Real money from sharing your tips. That's it from me then and Daniel. Take care, enjoy the football.